Welcome, and welcome to tonight's episode of Fun With Cheese. Tonight is episode 30, and you're thinking to yourself, there's no way he could have got to 30 different cheeses. And I'm here to tell you that there's a sign out in front of Dairy State Cheese in Rudolph, Wisconsin, in the corner of Highway 34 and Highway C that says they have over 86 different varieties of cheese. We got a long way to go. Uh, tonight's friend of the show are the hardworking members of the dairy production team, our dairy farmers and the supply chain who are taking that milk in and making it into uh, all kinds of awesome dairy products. I'm wearing the shirt because right now is hell's bells time for them. They're pulling three long shifts every day, uh, running full capacity, taking in the extra milk that's there and finding room for it uh, in refrigeration, cooler warehouses uh, and any place that they can go with and all of our schools I know we have um, a lot of schools and that's why I'm wearing the St. Croix rod because it started all up in the northwest section of, of uh, Wisconsin there and um, my hats are off to you guys because uh, you've inspired the entire state. I talked to a producer today. They're working with 13 different schools to bring dairy products in and serve those alongside the USDA provided lunches uh, and supplement with other dairy products that we have into the families there. So um, we're all going to be wanting to go fishing after this is all over, but St. Croix Rods, I'm out of hats. Seriously, I don't even fish. Like once a year I go fishing and I'm wearing a St. Croix Rod hat. So you guys got to... Uh, work on something I need some ideas for hats or if you know a place I can get a hat let me know uh, tonight's guest was a picture that I received or a picture that I received uh, from a student who uh, inspired me uh, there she was eating a sandwich today that was cheese on top of cheese on top of cheese and another picture I saw do you know that you can actually um, put more mozzarella on top of a frozen pizza and put that in the oven yeah it's called more cheese I do it I'm guilty of it. My wife doesn't like it, but you know what? I put more cheese on top of my cheese. It's good. Um, but I give you barata with flavor. Now, barata is a type of mozzarella. Yeah, I know I covered mozzarella a while ago, but this is a different type of mozzarella. This is a mozzarella that comes from the boot of Italy. It's made from buffalo's milk. And what they do, uh, these buffalo, they... Uh, live on the Apelia plateaus and they graze on grasses up there and the cheesemakers in Italy came up with this crazy thing where they took cheese and they stretched it and they stretched and they're like wow I can make a glove with it and in that glove they put a pouch and then they took and this is where the inspiration comes from Delaney Becker they took that pouch and they stuffed cheese inside of the cheese amazing thing um, and if you look at this barata it's best served fresh now this came from Italy and I got it from the World Cheese Championships, but they put a little bow tie in there. And as I cut this guy open, um, that's gonna take us into our next section of our show here. And I'm betting that they could have put a cork in there, but you can see, and we can put herbs and things like that, but um, it is a soft cheese like a ricotta stuffed inside of a mozzarella. No, they put all kinds of herbs to Provence. Oh my gosh, it's just good. Wow, it is delish. They put all kinds of herbs on this. But this burrata leads me to the inner stuffing of today's show. Get that? See that little wordplay there? Um, I'm going to have another slice of this because this is so amazing burrata. Buffalo milk. Never had it before. Glad I tried it. So many of you are working to school lunch programs and picking up school lunches, or you might know somebody who's going to a food pantry or getting... Uh, some sort of extra milk in your uh, process or just going to the grocery store and buying milk. It's all good. But um, the thing I wanted to show you that there are labels out there that are like warm fuzzies and things like that. And like, you know, if I put a, I put a label on water and said that it was wet, it'd make you feel good. Because I always ask for dry water when I go to the restaurant. But this is what our Auburndale residents are going to be getting tomorrow. It's just like the bags we get at Quick Trip. Um, but this is, um, uh, and we learn, okay, this is from Weber's Farm Store, and on the back you're going to see the plant number 55254, but on it you're going to see grade A milk, okay, so it comes from an inspected dairy producer farm that has to meet uh, specific standards for cleanliness and where their well is and how they uh, clean their equipment, where the animals are housed, so on and so forth. But there's this word called pasteurized. 
all milk that you buy in the store is pasteurized. Now, you can buy raw milk, you can buy unpasteurized milk, and if that's your thing, that's your thing. But I don't want you to be afraid of the pasteurized word because pasteurized happens in two different ways. We have to heat the milk, okay? We gotta warm it up. And that's gonna kill off any bad bacteria that might be in there. There's bacteria all around us, okay? Um, but any bad bacteria that might be in there. So if there's listeria, there's um, E. coli, anything that might happen to be there, the pasteurization process is going to do that. HTST, high temperature short time, they heat it to 161 degrees in the process line, and then they bring it down really cold. 15 seconds is all it is. Otherwise, there's a LTLT, which is a long temperature, long time, and that's 141 for 30 minutes. Not very efficient in the process when we're trying to get thousands of gallons of milk through per hour. So, pasteurization kills off the bad bacteria. Now, will your milk still go bad? Absolutely, put it in your fridge. These bacteria that are still there are gonna convert the sugars, the lactose, into an acid and cause the milk to go sour. And you'll be like, whoa! And then you twist the cap on and you put it back, just like the song goes. Um, you can buy ultra-filtered or sterilized milk, which is then put in aseptic packaging. Remember that? We were talking about the little pouches, the high C containers. My exchange partners in Germany, we had those. We went to the grocery store. They had pallets of milk sitting in the center of the aisles. Pasture, or, uh, sterilized milk. Shelf-stable, good forever, but that's where they heat it up to a temperature where they kill off all the bacteria, and then they pump it into the uh, aseptic packaging. Second one, homogenization. It's a long word. It's not really that difficult. So, we have fat globules, butter fat that's in the milk. And if I'll take a page from my, my hero wrestler guy, the macho man, the cream always rises to the top. How do we stop that? Okay, he holds a little Dixie cup by half and half, the cream rises to the top. How do we stop that? These big flat globules are going around there. They like to stick to each other and then they float to the top. They are uh, sitting there. So what we have to do is we have to, hold on, I forgot one thing. Put them under high pressure through a little screen and or through a, a jet and we're gonna push those fat globules through that jet, through that screen and we're gonna bust them up, okay? And we're gonna bust them up into little flat globules that'll disperse amongst itself in the milk and while it's in the milk it doesn't come back together again. Same thing when we talked about emulsions. We make those fats disperse amongst themselves so they can't come back together and that's what we're doing with the fat. Homogenization, breaking the fat particles apart. If you buy raw milk or unpasteurized or un, um, unhomogenized milk or, un, or just raw milk at this, or from uh, a producer, bless you, guys are doing what you're doing just explaining this to people who buy store-bought milk why doesn't their milk separate because it's been homogenized okay um, thirdly you're gonna have to refrigerate your milk just because the date says that this is sell by date does not mean that you throw it out that date you can still use it it's still there um, we also pasteurize other products like meats we keep those at 156 and hold those for a certain amount of time because it kills off the bacteria that's there Leave your um, bologna in the fridge for a month and you will find that there's something that starts to grow there, okay? Uh, not all bacteria is killed off. The good bacteria thrives, bad bacteria killed. It's all good. Um, so, a couple other things that you might see. Milk is not a GMO, not a genetically modified organism. There's 10 of them. I'll explain them on another time, but milk is not one of them, not a GMO. Milk is all natural, regardless of what the letter or what the label says. Milk is all natural. On the ingredients, it says milk and vitamin A and D added. Why vitamin A and D? It's high in calcium, and A and D are helpful in helpful with bone structure. So they add supplement A and D with it. That's the only ingredients in there. It's all natural. It comes from a mammal. She has to have a calf. Um, Milk is high in calcium and milk is gluten free, unless of course you add gluten to it. So if you see a label that says the milk is gluten free, the water is wet. So I just wanted to bring those labels out to you. I don't care how your milk, how you procure your milk, you know, it's like Tom Vilsack said, I love all sorts of cheeses, I love all sorts of milk. Ask me which one my favorite is, they're like all my kids. I love them all and I love all ways that they're produced and the, the heart of the farmer behind all of them is where the heart of it all is. So you guys stay classy. Remember, 
that barata is a stuffed cheese inside of a cheese. It comes from Italy, and it is milk step into immortality. Stay classy, and we'll see you for 31.